Hello and welcome to the eighth video in this Java series for beginners. In this video we're going to be looking at arrays and arrays are a different concept that we haven't covered yet in Java and what arrays are is they are variables which hold more than one value at least that's the best way I can describe them. So I can show you uh, an example straight away uh, before we were looking at variables such as integer a equals 10 but what if uh, the variable is no longer just an example variable uh, such as a uh, for example if we change this to ages for example the ages of pupils in a class for example um, we don't want to make loads of new variables like so and we'd have like two three four ages one two three four of all the pupils in the class it's far more useful and easy to read if we can store all of the ages of the people in the class in this one variable here and then access them somehow later on so we just want to basically we only want to use uh, one we only want to have to call one variable to do them and to do this uh, the syntax is quite simple uh, so the first thing we do is we need to change the variable type that we're declaring so we want to declare an integer but we want to declare an integer array and the symbol for array is an opening and closing square bracket like so and you can think of the square brackets like a box and the uh, the box is the array and it holds more than one thing so the integer array uh, this is the variable type we're declaring it's a uh, the in followed by the two square brackets and we can do this with any other variable type much like the ones uh, I showed you beforehand like float uh, we can have a boolean array we can have any variable uh, variable type array any variable can be in array form and we can store more than one of them so we're making an integer array we're calling it ages so we're going to set it equal to now the difference here is there's not one value there's obviously going to be uh, more than one value uh, there's two ways we can initialize an array. We can initialize it uh, as a sort of blank array and give it a set amount of values, or we can just start entering the values manually. So I'll show you how we can just manually start entering the values straight away. We can set it equal to, and then do uh, the spiked brackets that we're familiar with. And then inside these spiked brackets, we do um, any amount of comma separated values that are a valid instance of this variable type. So all of the variables in here have to be integers. They can be doubles or booleans or anything. Uh, so a list of comma separated integers in this case. So we'd have like 17, 21, 18, 19, etc. And there can be any number of these values here. Uh, so let's leave this array how it is. And I'll show you a different way we can initialize an array. And then I'll show you how we can access each individual value from inside here. So the second way we can initialize an array, um, uh, let's do a boolean array this time. And we'll say boolean array using the two square brackets. And uh, we can just separate with, we can just put some spaces here so both of the variable names will line up. And you are allowed to do this in Java. There can be uh, any number of white space between, uh, within reason, between different uh, things like between the equal sign here, between the brackets here, etc. Uh, so let's do a boolean for uh, if this group of people with their ages, uh, let's see if they're students or not, for example. So let's make the equals line up as well. Uh, so We've got this Boolean array here for whether or not uh, each of the corresponding values here, each of these people here, uh, is a student or not. So we're not going to initialize this the same way with the brackets. We can, I'll show you the second way to initialize an array. Uh, we can say Boolean array, give it a name. We can say it's equal to a new Boolean array, like so. So we're, we're, we declare the variable type, first of all, which is a Boolean array. We give it a name then we can set it equal to a new instance of this. And then inside the square brackets here, we actually need to give um, a value, an integer of how many slots we want the array to have, how many um, how many like variable holders does it need. So one, two, three, four, we had above. So let's just put this one as four. Okay, so those are the two different ways you can initialize an array. Now, how do we access each of the values in here? Um, so this Boolean array here is obviously blank so far. We've given it the amount of slots we want. 
uh, but we haven't actually given it values yet. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how we can give values to this. So we first call upon the variable, which we have, it's called student. And then we can put the square brackets like this. So we're accessing this student uh, array. And inside the square brackets, we need to give the index of the value we're accessing. So there's uh, four values. There's four like holders in this array here. And this is the most important thing to note about arrays. Um, the indexing in Java starts at zero. So putting in student zero, like so, accesses the first uh, point in the array. And then if we put one, it will access the second one. If we put two, it's going to add the third one. And if we put three, it's going to grab the fourth one. And three is the max amount we can, is the highest one we can access because there's only four slots in the array. So again, uh, the indexing starts at zero. So uh, basically the zeroth place in the array is the uh, first slot in the first slot in the array. So let me just explain this better. I'll add a comment here. So I'll annotate it above this one here. So this sl this first one here with number 17 is actually the zeroth one. Uh, and then the f this is the first one. And this is the second one. And this is the third one. And so on. Uh, so those correspond to those ones below. And that's how you access arrays in Java. So using we're going to access the first one using the number zero. We can set this equal to true. Then we could just copy this down some. And we can just make sure we increment those values. One, two, three. We can set true, false, false, and true. So that's the second way we can initialize a an array. You can see it's uh, if we you can see if we already know the values, it's much easier to do it this way. But you might not know the values beforehand. You might need to do it like this. So those are basically the two ways you can do them. So now let's look at how we can uh, use these values in loops. Now, the, e the easiest loop to use when doing arrays is a for loop because we can use built-in variables. We can use a built-in uh, property that um, arrays have to easily loop through every instance in an array. So let's go ahead and write for. We're going to make an integer called i equal to zero. And i is the standard one uh, we use, i for increment. Then we need to give it a condition, so we can say if i is less than, and then we're going to choose the array we want here, so we're going to say ages, and then if we put the full stop, we can access the properties of this uh, array here. And arrays have an inbuilt property called length, and the length of the array is basically how many things it has in it, how many items it has in it. Then we could put a semicolon, and then we need to increment the i by one uh, every iteration of the loop. So the reason for loops are so easy for arrays is because if we start uh, on zero, we're gonna first loop. We're gonna first access the zeroth one in the array, and then the first one, the second one, incrementing each time. And then on the on the last one, um, obviously ages dot length. This value is equal to four. So because the length of it is equal to four. Uh, and we put the less than value here, it means it's only i is only going to ever be equal to 3, which means we're not going to get errors if we uh, if it sort of ticks over to the next one. So I'll show you the way we uh, use this, and I'll also show you the errors you get if you try and access an array uh, slot that isn't available. So let's go ahead and say system.out.println, and we'll just put in the value of ages. So we're accessing the variable ages, and then much like we did here, we need to access a specific one. We're going to put in the value i. So each instance of this loop, so we can go through it because there's only four. Uh, it's not that hard to do. The first um, instance of the loop i is equal to zero. So we're accessing the zeroth one in the array. That's going to print out 17. The second loop, this is going to be equal to one. So we're going to print out 21. Uh, the third loop round, they will be equal to two. We're going to print out 18. And on the fourth one, uh, it's going to be equal to 3, uh, which will print out 19. And then when it comes again for the fifth time to check it, uh, i is going to be equal to 4, and 4 is not less than 4, which means this loop won't run. So when we hit run here, we can see that it prints out all the values. So let's go ahead and change this here to less than or equal to. So what this is going to do now, it's going to make uh, it's going to cause an error. It's going to do the exact same thing as this, except on the fifth iteration, 
uh, 4 is less than or equal to 4, which means that it's going to try and do this again, and it's going to try and print out a value in slot 4 of the array, which doesn't exist. Slot 4 uh, would be this imaginary one here, uh, the fourth slot up here, uh, whatever number you'd put in there. But in this example, we haven't actually initialized that value yet. So we're going to print out all of these, and then we're going to see we're going to get an error. So you can see we print out all the values, and then we get this array index out of bounds exception, uh, this thing here. And you can see it prints out the number, uh, the invalid number that we were trying to access. And then also it tells you where the error was at, so you can click it. And it basically tells you the line on which the error occurred. So that's just an important thing to be aware of. If you try and access an array value which doesn't exist, you're going to get this error here. So hopefully that all made sense. In the next video, we're going to be looking more at arrays and we're going to be um, looking at strings.